Hello Linux fans and with much fanfare, the announcement for Linux Mint 18.2 Sonya. It was official yesterday, which was July the 2nd. Now I've been running the beta since the uh, beta was released with both the XFCE desktop as well as the Cinnamon desktop. And I've got to say, by far, um, I prefer the XFCE desktop spin or version of Linux Mint over the Cinnamon version. Now I've come around to Cinnamon. Uh, it's growing on me. But I've got to say, with my laptop, the fan was running much more than it ever did with XFCE. So what I did was I just went ahead and downloaded the official release ISO and did a reinstall. Uh, there will be an upgrade path for that. I'm not sure if it's been announced yet or not, but stay tuned for that because there will be an upgrade path for those of you running the uh, beta or previous versions. All right, so why is this their best version, or in my opinion, their best version? Well, it's number one. It's light. It's fast. It runs very well on the system. However, as I start launching things here as I'm recording, you're going to see some pause, but trust me, believe me, I'm telling you folks, this thing runs very, very well on the laptop. So, I love the configuration behind XFC. It's not all apparent at first. And I've been telling my buddy Rocco, man, you got to start getting into uh, spending more time with XFCE. He may do that. I don't know. I don't want to push him too hard. He's very happy with what he's running now. And, you know, he's all into GNOME, as he calls I think he calls it GNOME like I do. But he's all into GNOME right now. Um and then if you go over to Linux and other stuff, he gets into some of the Compiz settings and everything with Linux Mint and does a great job there. So you want to also check that out. I've been thrilled with this, and it's been very, very stable, even in beta form. And so I want to step through what's new. So we'll take a look at that. I want to get ahead of myself here. And I've got this all themed up, themed up. By the way, let me back up. This is not what you see out of the box. I've got icons in place and everything. I've got this all themed. So uh, this is not exactly what you're gonna gonna see when you first launch in. Uh, so let's go through here to new features. And I'm gonna just kind of browse through some of these and point out some of the highlights. I'll put the link here and you can read this at your leisure or leisure. Um, XFCE improvements. So the Whisker menu has been upgraded to version 1.7.2. Um, so desktop actions are supported. Launchers can be edited from the context menu. And then the category names can be hidden in preferences. And I've been using versions of that um, on other distros where that's already been there. But nice to see that in place here. And the other thing is, is that the Whisker menu is not always the default menu launcher for XFCE and other distros. And so this is more of a complete XFCE um, uh, mix here with Linux Mint. They've done an exceptional job, I think, at getting all the right things for XFCE in place. The other big thing I want to point out here is the improvement here with XFWM4 Window Manager. It's been upgraded 4.13. This is the big one for me, which is vSync support to prevent screen tearing. Yay! Yay! <laughs> uh, improvements to Bluetooth support. Uh, let's keep on going here. Lots of updates to the X apps, X player, uh, Pix, X reader, X viewer updates, and then improvements to the update manager. And we'll take a look at the update manager a little later. Uh, and then under software sources now, there's a select all option in the appropriate places. Under light DM, so you've got a brand new login screen that allows lots of options here, and it's pretty slick looking and the big thing here is it supports high DPI so that's nice you can change the background the colors things like that and artwork improvements so thanks to all of these people listed here for the beautiful wallpapers that's one area where Linux Mint has always you know had a nice selection of wallpapers alright so the main components here again Linux Mint 18.2 with XFCE 4.12 and the Linux kernel is a long-term support kernel of 4.8 based on the Ubuntu 16.04 package base. So you're going to get updates on this all the way up till 2021. So that's kind of the quick rundown. I'll put the link to this page in the video notes down below so that you can kind of read through all of that. All right, well, let's jump over here and take a look. And I'm going to talk about several things. I'll probably bounce around some. I've got previous videos here, one on the beta release, so you could go to that. 
Also, I've got videos in the channel where I go in and I really customize and go into all of the settings of the Whisker menu and customizations within XFCE. So I'm not, not going to get into all of that, but I do want to talk about a lot of the software that's pre-installed and what's default and things like that. So one of the things I love about the Whisker menu is you can't do this with every menu out there uh, within uh, various desktops. So we're going to scroll that all the way down. And I'm going to go through with categories here. A couple of things uh, under accessories, graphics, and things that I'll point out. So under accessories, you've got bulk rename, uh, which is nice. I do appreciate catfish file search. I found that to be very fast uh, and pretty accurate. You've got disk. You're familiar with that if you've run Ubuntu before. I added doc bar X because I'm going to kind of set that up and mess around with that some. You've got uh, image viewer, on-screen keyboard screenshot tool uh, let's go on down here tomboy notes was already set up and then you've got the USB image writer and stick formatter as well as XF burn let's go back to graphics now I added G thumb but you had by default GIMP and PIX and there's been some improvements with PIX there so we'll take a quick look at that a nice layout and everything all right, so we'll keep moving. Um, under Internet, Firefox was your default browser. I added Chrome. Um, you've got Pigeon Internet Messenger. Thunderbird Mail is your default client, and then for Mail, of course, and then Transmission. Now, under Multimedia, uh, you've got the XAP Media Player. Pulse Audio Volume Control was already set up for you. Rhythm Box, which is very nice, was already in place. Uh, I think I installed VLC Media Player. I don't believe that was already in place. And then you've got XF Burn. Under Office, the default suite there was LibreOffice. No surprises there. And I installed Evolution, PDF Shuffler, and WPS Office. Recently, I was running Fedora, and the updated version of WPS Office was like smoking fast on Fedora. So I haven't launched into this yet, but I just want to see if this... Uh, the speed that I was experiencing in Fedora was helpful in part because of Fedora or if it was the updated WPS suite. All right, let's go into settings. Now, you're going to see a lot here, everything from accessibility to appearance. And so if you get into the appearance side of things, this is where you can quickly go in and change your style, which is also known as themes. Now, you're going to see ambience in my list here, and you're also going to see radiance in my list. That is from Rayfinity, and I installed that. Those are beautiful themes and beautiful icons if you've never tried them. But what you will see by default is the Mint X themes or styles. And I've got to say, the Mint X Aqua is really, really nice and attractive and professional. In fact, let's just go ahead and switch over to that. I don't like the lighter color, but we're just going to quickly switch to that. And then we're going to go over and change the icons as well. Uh, to Mint X Aqua. And within the file manager, they're some of the most attractive, professional, polished looking folder icons that I've seen. I think that they actually surpass Breeze, the default Breeze, in my humble, humble opinion. Okay, you can adjust your fonts, and by default, you're going to see that hinting is already on with slight and sub pixel order here is set to RGB and that's typically the way I set it up myself if it's not already in place so having that already done for you is nice and I've got to say the fonts are really really sharp here uh, settings so you can go in and uh, change toolbar style uh, things like that menu and button options and event sounds you can turn that on or off I know uh, oftentimes people wonder where that is so that's going to be under appearance uh, even though you would think, okay, it's going to be under um, it's going to be under sound settings, it's it's actually here. So, all right, so let's keep moving uh, under settings again. Let's go to screen settings and layout. Yep. So this again, straightforward. Now I have one external monitor set up, and so this was just a breeze. It does exactly what it's supposed to do. I couldn't tell you if you've got multiple monitors, two or three monitors set up, I couldn't tell you if this works well or not. Uh, so maybe that's where some of you users with multiple monitor setups could comment in the video notes below and just let folks know if it works well here or not. And we'll keep moving. Lots to see in settings. So I'm, gonna, there's, I'm just going to highlight some of this. You've got a firewall configuration tool here in place. Uh, sharing options. 
Let's keep moving light locker settings for your locking session. Uh, network connection controls, power manager, and again here, very straightforward and easy to understand. Uh, let's keep moving. Uh, menu editor. This is a menu editor for the Whisker menu, and it actually works. It works very well, so you can go in and take out what you don't use. So, for example, I'm not a developer. Um, I don't even play one on TV, but so you could remove this uh, from the menu list. And these things don't always do what they're supposed to do. I've tried them in other distros, menu editors, and some some of the times they are hit or miss. Uh, notifications, you could go in and set up and control uh, notifications, the position, uh, for example, how long they're there, uh, translucency, you could preview that. So that's a little light. Let's, let's try that again. There we go. Not bad. So we'll close that out. All right, close on out. There we go. Settings, back down here. Removable drives and media. Session startup, preferred applications. So here we've got Google Chrome set up. And then here I'm going to change that to evolution. I set up evolution earlier. File manager and terminal. So you get the picture here. You're starting to get the idea, I hope, in that you've got a lot of what you need to make this a complete operating system, but you also don't have all this other added stuff that you just don't know what it is, and there's not a lot of things set up that are super redundant. So I really like that. It's just one of those distros that has that right balance. Now, don't get me wrong. I love distros like MX16, which is a uh, Debian-based distro that uses the XFCE desktop and does some things with it that take it to the next level as well. Um, you know, and they've got their own tool set, but this is a good balance. It strikes a good balance. Let's go to system here. You've got software manager, software sources, and synaptic package manager. So the software manager, um, you know, it's very similar to Ubuntu. I'm going to skip over that. I've taken looks at that in other videos. Uh, driver manager, I want to point that one out because it works very well, does exactly what it's supposed to do. In my case, I'm using the Intel micro uh, drivers for that, but uh, to have that built in and working the way it should, that's one of the areas where, you know, when you're setting up particular drivers, you want it to be correct. Uh, the update manager, and that's where you get into, there's not going to be an update here, but that's where you get into some things that are unique to Linux Mint. So, for example, they've got a grading system, so there's nothing there now, but you've got various levels that you can choose for update. There's actually a level 5. Uh, they recommend that that's dangerous, so they don't even show it here, but you can choose that when you're first setting up. So if you go into preferences, you could say hide the update manager after applying updates, for example. Uh, don't suggest to switch to a local mirror. I turn that on because I've already switched and, and I'm where I need to be. Uh, always show security updates so you can toggle all of those on or off. You could always select kernel updates, for example. And then you get into the levels here. So one through five. Minimal to dangerous. Now truth Truth for me is I've updated things from one through four, uh, maybe even five, and have not had issues. Uh, here it's ticked all the way up to four, but you know you can use this as you see fit. I like this. I like the idea behind it. The first time I saw it, I thought, you know, hey, what a great idea. Why didn't I think of that kind of thing? Um, you can set up when you refresh, and you can blacklist. So very nicely done there. And that's just, you know, one of the one of the things that when it was introduced that helped Linux Mint to not only stand out, but it helped a lot of people um, not or it, it prevented a lot of people from crashing their systems with these major crazy updates. All right, let's go back to system here. Um, we talked about update manager, users and groups. Uh, you can set the time and date, and you'd say, really? Well, why are you uh, pointing that out? Well, it's because with other distros, with XFCE, that's not always included. You have to go in and actually add the ability to um, graphically go in and change your time and your date. 
Um, so um, we talked about driver manager, and then there's backup tool in case I didn't mention that. Um, make sure I didn't miss anything. Oh, the welcome screen. Let's go to the welcome screen. So nothing super special or spectacular about their welcome screen. However, this does launch and load up when you first boot in. And you've got your typical new features list, documentation, access to their forums and chats. And then this will give you a quick link to apps and drivers. So those are two important areas. And then this is an important area as well, which is donations. If you like what they've provided here, you can always donate. So um, well-rounded, very surprising to me. The, the fact that I am sitting here recording a video saying to you folks how pleased I am with Linux Mint. Not that I've ever hated Linux Mint by, by no means. I think the thing that was off-putting for me with Linux Mint for the longest time was the Cinnamon desktop. It wasn't my preferred desktop. Um, that's the wonderful thing about GNU Linux is we have so many options. Sometimes that's the downfall of Linux too. Depends on who you ask. Uh, but so, you know, I jumped on the Linux Mint bandwagon early on, like many of you watching this video, and then moved on to other things. And again, Cinnamon wasn't my bag. Now with XFCE running so well, with it being so well implemented, it just seems like a perfect match, a match made in heaven, if you will. Uh, so Rocco, if you're listening, give this a try. I'm just, I'm ribbing him because I'm trying to talk him into trying this. But uh, at any rate, uh, my wife's uh, laptop has been running Ubuntu Mate for months and months and months, and she's ready to try something new. So I may go this route, and we'll see how it does for her. I was thinking about an Arch-based distro, but we will see. Um, I recommend this for new users, for experienced users, and uh, even if you've got a system that's maybe a little old, maybe it's six, seven, eight years old, uh, with the XFCE desktop, I think it's going to run well. It certainly does on my system, although while I'm recording here, things open slow, and it makes it look like I've got just a dog of a system, which in reality, it's not that bad. Um, all right, well, here's my kind of summary, and I'm surprised to hear myself say this. This might be my daily driver for a while. Um, okay, I said it. I'm just going to move on because... <laughs> Because yeah, I'm such a distro hopper, I, well, it's hard to even commit to something like that. But that's how much I appreciate it and how much I like it. And this is coming from a guy who loves Arch-based distros like, you know, OB Revenge and, and Terragus and things like that. So uh, that's a pretty big statement, you know. Um, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you give it a try. If you do, I'd love to hear from you. And uh, as always, I appreciate you watching. Take care.